So yes, I'm also going to talk about like uh, just indeed E in Sumtu and I'm going to talk about A uh, in here and what is it doing. So just you know introduction what is I mean I an primarily I analyzed it as middle suffix in here. And you know, there are, so there are two semantic features of middle sim. So the, the initiator is the affected entity. So and low degree of elaboration of events. So these are two main semantic features of middles given by Kamar. Uh, and we already know that middle um, mark verbs tend to be intransitive and thought to be a detransitivation process, which is not you know fully true in for, for the case of here, as we will um, see examples later on. And uh, non-active middle morphology typically has several functions, which can be, you know, I have given some examples. One uh, number one example in one is taken from uh, Kumi as here doesn't have any anti-causative construction. Uh, so anti-causative uh, experiential or psychic verbs, uh, we have, uh, we can found in here, like so B required and the suffix A, which is B required is intransitive, you can see, uh, with the A suffix, we can have a transitive verb, so when I liked her or wanted her, I send letters to her. A reflexive, very common, also marks, A marks the reflexive, like ka A alt, so shape myself oneself. Uh, number four, indirect reflexives are auto benefactives, so right for ourselves. Reciprocals, uh, dispositional middles that, you know, like English examples, this book reads well, you don't find those in here. Most of the steady verbs are, you know, they do not take uh, the middle suffix a but some of them has like halay thirsty and uh, i can think of another verb do uh, be hungry and you can also derive stative verbs from uh, transitive counterparts like uh, tom is follow for tommy is you know be accompanied like the example in eight nanka nankini tame like here so we'll be escorted back by you. Okay, so the aims of this talk to, uh, is to identify the you know, functional domains of the suffix A. And I'll argue that mm, not all of the semantic classes of middle verbs given by Kemmer you know, are found in here, are not likely to have the A suffix, which is called middle. Uh, demonstrate that the A suffix cannot be treated as a balanced decreasing process because it also you know, if we see in that way, that it also increases the balance and define the function finally of the suffix A. Just to give a little a bit of background, uh, here, self, which means chin, so some people, I have heard some people saying, here chin, so here the word itself means chin, so for example, like to call themselves, like to here, so like to chin, so the word means chin and it's spoken in the south east of Bangladesh by almost 4,000 people. So there are two varieties, Lai Tu and Kong Tu, but uh, most of the data here come from the Lai Tu variety it's spoken in the Gumrupara of Bandarbana district in the Chirago Hill tracks. So I have first in C, I have given, you know, for your understanding, uh, if, if you can go to page number three. Uh, structure of the verb complex in here. I have also provided an example in nine. So, you know, depending on the meaning, uh, of course, the, the, you know, contribution of the, to the semantics of the verb A and all, they kind of, you know, compete with each other, which one is the closest one. For example, chet is go. So if you want to have the verb return, so chet al. So al comes first. So A cannot be there, so you cannot say chet A L. Then the meaning of the verb will change. It will mean, because chet A means walk. So chet A L means walk back. Again, chet al A would mean um, return oneself. 
Okay. So, <clears throat> the here in this section, uh, I will try to uh, go through the semantic classes of middle vowels and check whether A is truly the you know, middle marking suffix or not. First, uh, direct reflexives are marked by A suffix in here. It is very quite, it's quite common. Like, my son-in-law covered his face himself. And uh, reflexive verbs are, uh, take, uh, they take stem to parents of verbs. Uh, be reciprocals. So, after embracing each other again, so here, pong, pongi means embrace. So, embrace is kind of uh, reciprocal action. So, it by default it comes with the verb pong, so you cannot say pong, so it, you, have, you have to say pongi. Uh, deponents. They also take the a uh, suffix uh, by default, and uh, deponents are middle verbs that do not have any unmarked. Uh, they do not have any uh, active counterparts. And uh, it's interesting that in some of the deponents are also uh, transitives, so they come within you know, if marking the argument. A argument is marked by the aggregate marker la in here. So I have given a list of uh, deponent verbs which do not have any. Uh, active or uh, transitive or intransitive opposition, they, we will only find them in with a suffix lexicalized to them. In 12, I have given one example, uh, bite, so no way, it, it's lexi lexicalized under, under dependent verb in here, so the tiger will really bite me, no way. Okay, grooming verbs. So according to Kammer's classification, grooming verbs are mm, middle verbs, and they are supposed to get the middle suffix by default, right? But uh, in here, as in uh, to that we have seen that you have to, you know, by only the verb means that you shave or you do the action on other person, not yourself. So it's kind of, you have to make it reflexive. So A here, it's reflexive like ka a shape oneself. Body posture and uh, action verbs, they also are not, they do not by default take the suffix a, like lie down, sit down, stand up. But some action verbs in here, they take a suffix, but uh, when they are, you know, they, the actor do does the action involuntarily. So you have the a, sha a, uh, which, sneeze but you can also use the word share to mean sneeze it's evident from the example in 13 that you know it's not lexicalized because when you use the applicative logative applicative knock so you he sneezed on me purposive uh, not involuntary for non-translational verbs so movement of body parts without change of location so like blink, cap A is some middle verb as uh, according to the you know uh, classification given by Kama, middle verb. And there are other examples like ke, bo, ke A is nil, pack, jump, pack A is jump from one place to another. There are also some translational verbs, but not all the translational verbs given by uh, can, can be classified as middle. So like cheti, chene, and voke, these are translational verbs and also take the middle suffix a, but you know, like chet, or pipe, or go, fly, and fall, these are not middle verbs. Okay, positional verbs. They are not also marked by the suffix a by default in here. Uh, however, stem one variance of the positional verbs marked by the a suffix expresses stative meanings. So, for example, I have given you one example in 15. So, ya pankhcha, paisha, put here. So, so ba is the stem to which means hang to hang someone. 
something and uh, the form to form one is bot so you have to if you use a with that so it it's kind of it give you you know kind of state of meaning so be hung so the seven hand carrying bags were hung there but here stem one similarly okay be stuck from o lock uh, copy tie with bamboo be clung from cope tie with bamboo two stem two form okay emotion verbs this these verbs are really you know uh, it seems that when the suffix a is added to the root it uh, means in you know intensification uh, for example, I have given uh, like cup is cry, but kapi is, you know, weeping. Uh, pio is rejoice and pioi is be happy. Uh, these are oppositional verbs, but they are also non-oppositional forms like due, hali, na, a, lo, we. Okay. The common emotion verbs ket, uh, love, keta, hate. Uh, be angry, do not fall under the class of middle verbs in here. Uh, okay. Uh, conclusion verbs. So there is a difference between, uh, you know, taking the uh, suffix a and not taking the suffix a. So the difference is that when the actor is more affected, then it takes the suffix a. And when it's not affected, the actor is not affected, it doesn't take A. So it depends basically on the context whether you know you will have the suffix A or not. I have given you an example here. 16 Pumiya Krangla Ini Kale So by the thinking that he thinks that the people will envy him for taking her on lap. So it's kind of shame, you know, taking her his wife among people and go back. So the thinking itself, the process affects the actor. So that's why you have the uh, suffix a added to the verb think. Okay. Uh, but in uh, 17, so if he assumes uh, things like you are sleeping, he will roam around again for sure. You can see that here, Khan, the same verb is not marked by the suffix a because by the action of thinking here or assuming the actor is not affected okay k perception verbs they also take um, uh, the a suffix so chu nei pe hyalha having pain he lied down okay so they are indirect reflexives or auto benefactives those also take uh, uh, the a suffix the verbs uh, here I have the example eight. <clears throat> so by the action of dividing uh, the wild pig they have hunted or the killed, they are benefited. But same here we have yeah a this doesn't mean the doesn't give you the meaning of benefit, rather it's reflexive. So depending on the context you can get different meaning of the suffix. A it depends on the context whether it, it will be uh, self benefactive, uh, auto benefactive, or reflexive. Okay, derived status. So A is seems to be uh, you know you can derive stative verbs from intransitive forms like uh, from hyang hyangi, be disorganized, from scatter uh, to the form is kriye, be scattered. Okay, um, a as a derivational suffix. I have already given examples, but this this are kind of repetitive. So you can both derive intransitive and transitive verbs from intransitive counterparts. So in twenty one, from intransitive to intransitive, like from chet go, you have chet a, which is also an intransitive verb. Uh, walk from transitive to intransitive, uh, from term to term a. So Tom is follow and Tom is be accompanied from transitive to transitive. So Tom is follow and Tom may you have the from two verb here or stem two verb here is accompany. 
I have given some examples, uh, list of derived bars, but a suffix a in here. So om is sit, om is get married. I don't know, you know, whether there is a relation or not, but you have this, uh, you know, weird kind of derived verbs with the a in here, like chet, chete, poi is good, poi a is beautiful. Thon is happen, thoni is become, chon is run, chone is room around, ba is slap, ba a is applaud. So it's kind of reflexive uh, situation for ba and ba So ba for slap you need you know a different uh, participant to slap maybe, and ba a is applaud. So you have to use your own hands so that the same recipient so receiving the action yourself. So kind of reflexive situation here, ba a. Okay. Uh, F is kind of interesting. I'm not sure, but I have to check. In um, you know, three, four textual examples show that uh, A can be used as uh, an inverse marker in here. But you know, I have to check the data. So I have given one example here. So Shilpulla Noini Pulla the A Hirti Hula the A Hirti. So the normal verb is the is to strike and the A here it. It's, it doesn't refer to any reflexive meaning. So only way of thinking and you know, explaining, I can think of explaining this is kind of reverse situation of you know human and non-human. So third person acting on third person non-human acting on third person human uh, kind of situation. We already have an uh, in inverse you know person hierarchy in here, but where you have first person, second person in the same position which is bigger than uh, third person, right? But here we have third person acting on third person and we see that by A, it might be an inverse situation, maybe marking an inverse situation. Okay. So, so far I, the examples I have given that shows uh, the stem variance with the suffix A and I have just summarized that. So, for reflexive verbs, they take stem two from uh, reciprocal stem one, derived middle can take both stem one and stem two. Passive or derived stem, the derived state if they must be, you know, they must take stem one form of the verb. Some observations, whether reflexive or dependence or derived middles, the subject seems to, you know, a, a encodes the actor's affectedness. Uh, Dubbing verbs which are generally marked by the middle suffix cross linguistically does not take the suffix a in here. Uh, the marking of the a suffix is not consistent with the semantic classes of middle verbs mentioned in Khmer. So where we expect that we will have the suffix a for middle verbs or middle situation, we do not have that suffix. Uh, verbs like k, bo, k, a, nil, hak, dribble, hake, snatch, pack, jump, or leap, pack, a, jump from one place to another. It's rather difficult to explain considering middle as the function of the a suffix you know we can only assume that there might be a greater degree of affectedness so what is the difference i mean jump in one place you know back a but you from if you realm from here to there it's back so what kind of you know semantic difference do you have i mean what's a encoding here right so you jump in one place it's back a so you, it takes the uh, suffix a but jump from one place to another it doesn't so it's really difficult to come up with any kind of, you know, conclusive remarks that what is it doing and how about bow, bowing and kneeling, you know. Maybe by kneeling you have to, you know, be more affected. affected. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and dribble and snatching, mm -hmm. you know, so dribbling is kind of, you know, How do we, how do I de describe the action dribbling? You know, with the football, like dribbling, right? You kind of don't get, give the ball to someone else. You just dribble and take that away. And snatch also is kind of you know, taking away the some stuff, right? So I'm not sure whether we know what's. Middle when sounds more intense, I think. Intense. Yeah, it's like kneeling, which is like narrowing plus. Mm. Maybe <laughs> 
<laughs> I yeah, I think I mean like, like after that you've got cry and weep. I'm not sure what what's the difference between crying and weeping. So I would say weeping is like maybe my translation is bad. Maybe it's it will, so. I what I meant to say is like longer period of crying. So when you like someone yeah. died, you were like mm, more. more. Yeah, so you you cry more you know, for longer period of time. Crying is not like you know just maybe for minute one minute or two minutes it goes away. But because the other thing I was looking at was mm-hmm. the so there's this sort of verb suffix. Um, pretty much lexicalized verb suffix in Burmese, sa. Yeah. Right? So, which I think I mentioned, yeah. and I kind of dump that, because it doesn't really fit E very well in Sumtu. But you do get things like, um, so sort of to, to, to raise animals is muy, and to adopt a child is muy zade. Mm. So you, you add this sa, and it makes it sort of more, either for your benefit, or for profit, or sort of more committed, or more, you know, there's some additional outcome or mm. additional factor to mm. it that kind of covers a lot of senses of sound. Yeah. And it's not productive, it's can, can do lexicalize, you can't. Um, okay. So to, um, to um, get to be interested in something is say your mind enters winzare, sort of to enter and inhabit and become involved. Mm. It's got this sense of doing the verb and engaging fully or something like mm-hmm. that it's quite hard to generalize about but it feels a little bit like that doesn't it mm-hmm. but it's not always you know lexical as you can have the like you have to for you know for natural reciprocal you have that lexicalized mm-hmm. you know but for non natural you know, uh, reciprocals you have to add a mm-hmm. like, like embracing or quarreling if you want to say quarrel is uh, you know you need the A, so it comes with the verb, like she, she A is quarrel, but it comes from the fight, so she, she is uh, the from one, so she is fight, but she is kind of, oh sorry, mm, she is fight, and she is kind of quarrel, so kind of, what is the difference from quarreling and fighting, you know, so not, well, what, sort of intensify. As, yeah, mm-hmm. as you were saying, what did you say, like, Engaging fully, so a quarrel. I mean, so it depends. The English maybe need not doing justice to yeah. it because mm. fighting, maybe quarreling, is like just all out <laughs> yelling Ding scream dong. of yeah. Maya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because most of these, if you go through mm. these, the fully engaging works for lots of it does, isn't it? Yeah. lots of them. Except like sit and get married. I mean, maybe there's. A, I so I have I have one I have one explanation for that I don't know whether it's it fits or not you know so in in our part of you know the world girls gets you know girls sit to marry you know they are the like guys marry takes like so um, I mean they're kind of in in from my you know in in Bangla we say that may I be a boshe so boshe is like sit they sit to get married yeah. but guys take you know the girl to marry so it's kind of I I don't know if there is any relation sitting is like remaining somewhere and getting married it's like to be forever stuck in this <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm still entertaining the question these are related to high. Uh, and Ome for me would make sense if uh, A was a commutative applicative in that yeah. context. Yeah, that, that that that's what I was thinking. Ome, yeah, Ome means exist. Exist or stay. Sit in commutative is really a different root, so Ome really means just to, to exist or to stay. Yeah. So it's yeah. the existential copyright. So to stay with is what that means. I don't know. Yeah, so other than, uh, you know, deponents, there are certain verbs, you know, transitive middles that also take, like, loke, so you cannot say only look. So loke, so you don't have any, you know, intransitive opposition of loke. So loke, you have, it has to be loke, so play. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, static verbs, they don't necessarily take, you know, they have to take the suffix a, but you can derive uh, statives from transitive counterparts. 
So if middle is a process of balance decreasing either semantic or syntactic, then the suffix a cannot be regarded as a middle marking suffix and it can be used to derive both you know intransitive and transitive you know, verbs from the intransitive counterparts like uh, from example number two you see that lu is be necessary be required but lu a is want so pang is to speak loudly for getting someone's attention but pani is call someone it's a kind of transitive sense uh, so I don't know. I mean, given the functions of a service, it seems that you know it's it, it it cannot be. I mean, I though I have you know labeled it as middle in here, but you know, kind of from the sense of less transitivity and more transitivity. Kind of, you know, but it does okay, both ways. It acts both ways, right? So, like uh, Helga said that it she calls it um, act, uh, agent orientation. So you can you have the a marker on. Even though it's you know without it you have reflexive meaning or kind of middle meaning, but you can also use a and without a it's also okay. So it's really hard to you know. I mean, it can be quite light, quite yeah. uh, subtle. Uh, that's unhelpful. Isn't it? So I think you know. Um, so I'm working on lighto now. So I will after finishing the you know full. Analysis I'll maybe uh, with sum to data, also we can have some clear idea. By maybe by comparing, we can you know, classify the vowels or maybe make some, you know, semantic classes or you know, get something. So what do you say for like to commit suicide or to stab oneself? Well, you can commit suicide in many ways, right? <laughs> so, in here. I don't have the word suicide. Mm. Maybe you should say you know kill himself. So okay, so with, uh, with oneself has a separate like NP before before the word. Like, like with with uh, with oneself being a separate like nominal kind of stuff uh, before the verb. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like two 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 separate words. So oneself care. Yeah, once of you kill yourself. Yes, uh, so, so you cannot say like kill a. Well, you are killing because you also you are also you know that's a transitive construction, right? So you have to use. I mean, not in uh, you know because it's kind of splitting in here. So he if is third person, so mm -hmm. a la to k he killed himself. Okay, so the a is still there. Yeah. If you don't want to have a la, you can have you, know, you have to have the marker on the bar for third person a. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, if you have more questions or discuss, I think we have a lot to discuss on middle. We only have another paper, I think, Lie by Smith. Uh, so it's not you know, really discussed in the sovereignty languages that way. <laughs>